What is it, YouTube? Day for Zephyr Games. We're here with Donald. Hello Donald again. Donald has an updated Blackwing deck profile with all the brand new support. So as you can see, we've got... Well, not all of that. The well, main three cards. The is main cards are what you need. <laughs> it's all the main stuff. You've got, obviously, the new Blackwing Synchro and you've got the new main deck monsters as well. Um, so these will be very, very good to kind of get around with. Uh, so I'm going to pass you over to Donald and Donald's going to take you through the full profile for you. All right. Hey, everyone. Uh, the champion is here. Or you made uh, Donald's F War Games. Uh, so this is for me is uh, deck number 33, uh, Black Wings. Um, just the four and foremost, the reason why I made Black Wings back in the day was because when Black Sonic came out, um, it's very, very, very powerful and back in. But let's get straight to the deck profile. So starting straight off from the very new set, we have Simon or Simon. Uh, some people would like to call it. Um, Simon, um, this is your combo player. He is your one card, oh, I guess two card because you have to banish another Blackwing to then get into the new level 10 Synchro. So, for those of you who don't know, um, when you banish, uh, you activate his effect while well, you control no monsters on your side of the field. Um, so you then banish one other black wing in your hand and then place one black whirlwind from your deck straight to your side of the field. After that, uh, uh, you then immediately normal summon this uh, card to the field and you will trigger black whirlwind. Now, this is actually an a additional summon, so you still have your normal summon for the turn in which um, you would then want to grab your Oster. Uh, so, yeah, aside from that, um, and during the, oh yeah, just a note mention, during the end phase, if you use uh, Simon's effect, you send Black Well into the graveyard, and if you do, you take 1,000 points of damage. So it's a one card, on play, make your level 10, then s send this to the graveyard, um, take 1,000 damage. So, yeah, what what more can you really ask for one, uh, one go-to play? So, the next one, I play two Oster. Now, reason being, um, you don't exactly want to see him in your hand, you will just search him from Black Warren. Alt alternatively, you can, if you really do want to, play a third copy. Um, it probably, I can, you know, I can easily take it out, uh, put a third one in for like, one of my tech choices, um, personally. And so, you play as a set two, when you normal summon Oster, he then special summons one banished uh, level four lower Blackwing um, to your side of the field. Meaning he instantly just automatically combos with Simon and you, you have your three monsters on the field. Uh, yeah, just just like so. His second effect, or its second effect, is that you can banish this card from your graveyard, um, including the turn it's, you, you send it to graveyard, uh, to then place a wedge counter on every monster your opponent controls. So now wedge, wedge counters have been a massive buff for this deck, and the way that this deck uh, uses it is very good. Okay, so, back to, so for the... Old stuff, we have, I play Triple Chris. Any Blackwing that you can special summon while you control another Blackwing, you really ought to play at free. It's it's a very, um, as my friend called it back in the day, a Zerg Rush deck. You just literally summon, spam the field, and go with that. Uh, with now with links, it's actually really beneficial to do so. Uh, Chris's effect is that um, in once per turn, it can't be destroyed by spell or trap effects. So, but being the 19 stick bead stick, even if you do normal summon it, um, for, you get basically any search for your black wings. Next, I play two Shura. If it, Shura is a nice bead stick of being 18 attack, um, but he's the one that you can't special summon from hand. Um, if this, uh, if sorry, if Shura. Spe uh, destroys the opponent's monster by battle, you can then special summon one Blackwing monster from your deck with 1,500 attack or less uh, uh, with its effects negated. That's perfectly fine. Gen my general uh, target for Shura is Panaki. Uh, Panaki. So you would then synchro summon into like a full armor, uh, full armor and get the search in the end phase. Next, we have Triple Bora. This board inflicts piercing damage and special summons if you control another Blackwing. Enough said. Now, probably going to get some controversial uh, questioning as to why I play two Zephyros despite its effect is once per duel. Uh, well, first off, it bounces one other uh, Blackwing card or one other card you control 
and you special summon from the grave, you take 400 points of damage, and you can only use this effect once per duel. Reason why I'm playing it too is that you do actually want to see this in your hand. Um, well, aside from having, not having wanting to have it at free, but in the occasion that you have it in your hand and banish it with Simon, you then the play is that you would have multiple summons and uh, you use this to link summon for Wee Witch. Now, it's also important to note that uh, this will basically negate the fact of Simon's burn effect of 1000 because if you bounce Black Whirlwind with Zephyros, you'll take 400 instead of 1000 and you'll keep your Black Whirlwind for next turn. And what more do you want uh, rather than having to send it to Grave? Because at the moment in time, Black Wings don't have a way to uh, add back Black Whirlwind and unless you're using like magical rep reproduction um, and, that sort of, and that sort of stuff. So yeah, reason, that's why I play two Zephyros. I mean, you can play at one and play a Foolish Burial. There's also that too, but I just play it too just to um, have it have it in the deck as well. Sorry. Okay, next. Probably the most um, most well known one of the well known Black Wings is Kalu. Damage set on this basically gains give your monster one four boost and it's not and you can chain all three onto one attack. What more and all do you want? Uh, just a 14 boost during when uh, Blackwing is uh, battles, or if you know if you're attacking directly, you can still drop this and give an extra 14 boost. So it's good as well. Next, I think probably one of my probably my favorite Blackwing. It's got to be uh, Gale the Whirlwind. The fact that it can just halve an opponent's monster. Uh, once per turn, it's just really nice to have. And the fact it's a level three tuner and it special summons itself while you control Blackwing is just too good to have. Next, I play to Blizzard. Blizzard is all right in some sense. The fact that it normal summons revives a level four or lower Blackwing from your grave basically means you know you can go for a link or we witch or you know, extra stuff i generally use this to go into um a level six uh no phone to get additional normal summon you can also use this to revive a level three tuner from your grave and then synchro with other monsters on your board uh aside from that this is really uh all its purpose and use and um not much to say with it Next, I play two Panaki. Uh, this is your level three tuner. It has to use, it has to synchro with a Blackwing. Oh, be used to synchro summon for a Blackwing synchro monster. And during the end phase, if this card's been sent to the graveyard, you can search one Blackwing monster from your deck to hand. It's just really nice to have in a sense. And if, yeah, and you're going to use this effect of once um, Panaki once per turn. This is nice to note. Last but not least, I play the one Black Wing Steam the Cloak. If it's sent from field to graveyard, you use special summon token. And then I believe, yeah, once per duel, I think it was. Yeah, once per duel. Um, you can tribute any other monster to then revive it from the grave. And it's mainly for the fact that it's 800 attack. It's the weakest of the lot, but it would be the one you search last in the deck. And yeah. I've actually managed to find a nice OTK combo, a free card OTK combo with the new stuff. So that's it for the monsters. For the spells, we start off your triple uh, black whirlwind. It's it's a must have. I'm sorry, the fact that you can just add a black uh, black wing monster with um, attack less than the one you've normal summoned is just too good to pass up. So speaking of normal summons, double so uh, play the one double summon. You can bump this up to two, but just having a black whirlwind, or even at least two, uh, is that you know you can normal summon, get two searches, normal summon again, get two more searches. That's the power of black whirlwind. Is just too good to not have. So that's the one double summon. For my personal favorite and tech and choice, chain summoning is an absolute godsend. Uh, the fact that you can just normal summon three times, maximum three times per turn, doesn't include the summon summon. So you get. Simon and additional free normal summons is actually very nice to have. You can actually also trigger this with um, the Simon effect uh, because what you would do is you will add your Oster and you will normal summon Oster. So you go ch chain link one with Oster, chain link two with uh, Black Whirlwind or the other way around just so you doesn't the uh, Black Whirlwind won't get ashed. And then you play your chain link three for your basically giving you two more normal summons. Now 
this will basically then result you into, for me in this case, would add me Panaki second normal summon, third normal summon for a Steam Cloak. So that's why I played Chain Summoning. You can bump this up to three because you do want to see it, but at the same time, it can brick you if you just don't have Chain Link 2s. Or, I mean, you can argue that in this day and age, there's a lot of hand traps floating around, so this will basically uh, stack on top of uh, Chain to that. Next, for the rest of the deck, we have your one Monster Reborn, uh, one Raigeki, just standard stuff. Uh, I played the, this is personal tech choice, uh, Dark Eruption, adding a Dark Monster with 1,500 less attack from your gra uh, graveyard to hand. I mean, you know, add any of the tuners, add if generally, you know, you can add back Kalu, just, it's very use, uh, useful in that sort of sense to um, reuse the stuff. I played the one MST, um, I have considered like Twin Twister, but you do end up burning through your hand, so there's not a lot of spell and trap removal until you get into uh, Raikiri. So, I mean, you can choose what you will. If you, you, know, you can take MST out for whatever else you ever want to do so. Uh, next, the S4 mentioned at the beginning, uh, Black's Triple Back Sonic, and on target, a remove from play card, like, well, Remove from play Mirror Force is too good to have. Admittedly, this was reason. This is the reason why I made the deck in the first place, and it was in the older format, you know, back when it actually came out. So, you know, you can do what you will. You can take these out, not play them because a lot of the time they probably will just get popped before they get into battle phase. But it's just too good to not. For me, it's just too good not to have this card uh, for a black wing deck in a sense, and to non-target banish is hard to uh, get around. Last but not least, one uh, anti-reverse. Anti-reverse is basically your, I guess, uh, destroy your opponent's set back row, but if you have three uh, or more black wings on your side of the field, you can activate this from your hand, which is surprising enough, now with uh, the new uh, Simon, you, you will have three from it just itself, because you, as I mentioned, summon, banish, uh, normal summon, special summon, and then there's your free. So, yeah, this can actually be bumped to if you're really heavy, if we're in a more back row format. Uh, but yeah, hand traps is the general thing for today. So that's it for the main deck. For the extra deck, starting off, I mean, we got to, I've got to give credits to where it's due. I play two of the full armor master. I don't, you don't necessarily go into free, uh, but. Basically, Full Armor Master, his effect, he's unaffected by other card effects. Uh, once per turn, you can take control uh, one of your opponent's monsters with a wedge counter on it. And during the end phase, uh, once per turn, you can destroy all monsters your opponent controls. Uh, uh, have, oh, actually, no. All monsters on the field with wedge counters. So, you can already see that Oster is your is the one that just basically field floods or makes your opponents uh, gain wedge counters. Summon this, take control of your opponent's monster, and then if you really want to, in the end phase, they have, you can you can destroy everything that has a wedge counter. Admittedly, the take control is also really nice. The fact that uh, it's actually once you take control, it's it stays on your side of the field for for the rest of the game, basically, uh, like a change of heart, but not until permanently. Yeah. So this is, a, despite it's a 3k, 3, uh, 3k beats, uh, the fact that it's just unaffected by other card effect is just too strong. Now, I do play the one, um, the level 12, I forget, uh, on, uh, on Maro, sorry, yeah, on Maro. Uh, generally because if it really does come to the uh, Black Wings, you will have, uh, need to get this as a 6k beat stick. Um, other than that, it's uh, just for serves its purpose. Um, okay, on to the level 7s, I think, to be honest, I play 2 Armor Master, the, uh, the combo that I play is uh, you end with uh, your full, full Armor Master and Armor Master on the field, so he's your generally go to level 7, uh, because he can't be destroyed by battle, he, you take no battle damage uh, involving it, and if it battles upon, if it attacks opponent's monster, you put a wedge count on it. And also, in your main phase, you can activate its effect, make any monster on your opponent's side of the field with wedge counters, their attack zero. So just neutralizing all attack on your opponent's side of the field and just swinging for bigger damage. So 
this this is what I meant by wedge counters being a greater play now. To not only can you just take control, then just bo uh, make uh, all your opponent's monsters zero attack is just too good to pass up. Uh, the other go-to level seven is Raikiri. This allows you to destroy uh, cards uh, uh, up to the number of uh, other black wings you control. So while I say Armor Master is good choice to have. Rykiria is also really nice to have as well. Being able to, your only pop uh, card in this uh, extra deck is just what it is. I played the one, um, sorry, forget, forget, uh, yeah, one Joe, <laughs> one I've seen Joe. Uh, this allows you to revive a, a level seven or higher black wing from your graveyard to your side of field. I can't remember, yeah, and if a card your opponent activates, a card or effect that targets this card, you can target, uh, or, or for an attack, sorry, you can target one other black one once so you control that would be an open target and then basically switch it to that. So generally you just basically revive and go from there, that's all his purpose is. Uh, for the level 6, as I mentioned, low fun, uh, you can... This is your additional normal summon. Uh, when you when you normal sum when you sum synchro summon this, you burn your opponent 800, and you reduce an opponent's monster with eight, uh, for 800 attack as well. Um, so not only burning but also reducing attack. And its other effect is you can additional normal summon one black wing monster per turn. So which is very good uh, for when you have a black whirlwind. I uh, played the one sure. Um, this basically, when synchro summon, you basically revive a Raikiri or anything, and because when you synchro summon this, it becomes a level 5 tuner, and so as you can see, it would just revive a level 7, and this is how you get into your big boss monster play. This is all it really does for me, um, enough said with it. The other level 5, I've played the 1 gram, now... This is mainly a personal tech choice for me. The fact that when you synchro summon, you special summon at level four or lower, uh, black wing have its effects negated. Is it's pretty okay in terms of what you need on the board, especially if um, you know you need more uh, stuff to play. Or generally, from uh, most probably best use is to summon Blizzard from your hand if you have if you've already used your normal summon, and then basically go into your level synchro summon uh, seven play as well. For the XYZ, I play the one um, you can is, and that is Ice Beast Seraphine. This is undoubtedly probably what I personal opinion that is the best rank for for winged beast monsters. The fact that it can sport, uh, uh, negate all other cards' effects and gain attack 300 for each one they've negated is just too good to pass up for any winged beast of rank level four span deck. You can argue that you might want to go for uh, a Raid Raptor for Strix just to extra search, but with Black Whirlwind doing that already, you, it's rarely often that you would need to go into um, for Strix to do so. And the one link, I played the one Wii Witch Apprentice, just recently put this in because, um, I mean, while you do sort of rely on sitting on the one Black, uh, black Wing Synchro, this actually helps in giving the extra boost in the OTK as for mentioned. That's it for the deck profile. I hope you all enjoyed it. Um, I'm hope I'm really excited to try and test this out for the next locals. And um, so let me just wrap this all up. And so there we go. So thank you for watching. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, guys. Uh, sorry. Happy Dolan. <laughs> What's up YouTube? Thanks for watching that video. I hope you liked it. If you did, hit that like button. And of course, don't forget to hit that big red subscribe button in the bottom left hand corner and the notification bell so you don't miss out on anything. We've got more deck profiles, duels, pack openings and many more Yu-Gi-Oh videos coming up for you all year round. So don't forget to stay tuned for all of that. Thanks and as always guys, happy Dolan.